We're celebrating Christmas in July here at Creative Fabrica and I have made these adorable toilet paper rolls. This one is done with sublimation. This one is done in HTV. So whichever method you prefer using, you can get this done. Hi, I'm Brenda here today with Creative Fabrica, and if you have not heard yet, they are giving this bundle away. This bundle is ginormous. It has a ton of designs in it. You're not going to want to miss out. So when we are done here, you're going to want to head over to the Creative Fabrica website, grab this free bundle, and if you haven't yet, you're going to want to add another year to your subscription because they have an awesome rate going on that right now as well. I am going to cover both methods in this video today, so let's get started. The supply list is really quite simple. You are going to need some fresh rolls of toilet paper. If you're working with an HTV project, of course you'll need your HTV and you'll need a weeding tool. If you are doing sublimation, you're going to need your sublimation paper, your sublimation printer, and of course the sublimation ink. I like to put mine in little plastic bags and tie them up with a bow just for an added touch of cuteness. I will be cutting the HTV projects out with my Cameo 5 and I will be pressing both with my heat press. And I almost forgot, if you are doing sublimation on toilet paper rolls, you're going to want to grab some of this sublimation coating. You just spray it on the toilet paper sheets and let it dry before pressing. All of these supplies will be linked down in the description below in case you need to grab any of them. Before we start on anything, I'm going to unravel this toilet paper a little bit. I don't want to press on this first square because there is glue there. So let's get rid of that. And I'm just gonna give it kind of a dusting. Sublimation works best if it is lint-free, but we are working with toilet paper here, so we'll just do what we can. You want to take your sublimation coating spray and give it a nice, even coat and just let that set and dry while we get the rest of the project going. Here we are in Silhouette Studio. The first thing we are going to do is head up to File, down to Merge, and it has brought up the Christmas Toilet Paper SVG Bundle and the PNG files for that. For the sublimation toilet paper, I am going to use Tinkle All The Way so we can double click on that and it will bring it onto our mat. This came in quite large, let's scale it down. I did measure my toilet paper squares and they are approximately four by four each. So if we have this right around 3.5, that will work out perfectly. Let's make it just a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and set this up for sublimation now. We need to switch our media size over to letter. Let's show the print border just so that we are sure that it's not going to get cut off here. Then we'll need to right click and flip horizontally. You always want to be sure to mirror your sublimation images before you print it out. Now we can go up to file and down to print. You always want to check your print preview. I am using my EcoTank 3760 for this. That is my sublimation printer. You want to check your preferences to make sure that the quality is set to high. We can click OK and then print. Let's get our press warming up. I have it set for 385 degrees for 60 seconds. And this is set in Fahrenheit and press OK and that will start warming up. Now since I did not leave a whole lot of time for the sublimation spray to dry on the toilet paper, I'm going to place it on the heat press. I'm not going to set it down on there. I'm just going to let it hover while it heats up. It will kind of dry that a little bit faster. You do want to be careful with the damp toilet paper. We all know how fragile that can be. Our toilet paper is nice and dry here so we can start building our sublimation sandwich. I'm going to use a regular piece of copy paper on the bottom to protect my foam pad. 
Let's trim out our sublimation print so that we can get it lined up properly. And I'm going to use just a little bit of heat resistant tape to tape it down to the copy paper. I am not letting this tape touch the actual toilet paper because sometimes the yellow tape will leave a stain if it gets too hot. That should hold it nice and secure. Let's put another piece of copy paper on top. Bring our press back around, drop that down, and set the timer. Now you can see the sublimation did go through to the paper. That's why you want to protect the bottom of your press. But the colors came out awesome on that. Now let's set this one aside for a minute, get the HTV roll done, and then we will wrap them up together at the end. Let's set this one aside. If you're working with HTV, you will want to get either the DFX file or the SVG file. I'm going to go ahead with the SVG, and I think I want to go with Stink, Stank, Stunk, because that one is fun. Of course it came in very large again let's resize this so that it is 3.4 inches and it's going to be too tall let's put in the height at 3.4 inches that will fit nicely now we need to ungroup this design we can go up to select by color we want to work with the fill color select the green right click and group then we can select all of the red, right click, and group. I am a little bit worried about these teeny tiny dots, but we are going to go ahead and see how it goes. We might have to do a different file for this one. Since we are working with HTV, we need to go in and flip both of these horizontally so that they are mirrored. Let's go ahead and switch our media size to 12 by 12. Turn on the cut border, turn off the print border. We can leave the red up in that corner and we'll set the green down in this corner and that way we can run both colors through on the same mat. Over in the send panel, all of the cut lines are lit up. That is good. My material is set to heat transfer smooth. Now we can get our mat ready and send it through to cut. I did have some red and green HTV in my scrap bin, so I'm going to go ahead and use these up for this project. You're going to want to remember to put the shiny side of the vinyl down on your mat. The mat side should be facing up. We need the red to cut out of the top corner here, and the green will cut out of the bottom corner. Now when you press send in the software, a warning box will pop up asking if you want to send it mirrored or send it as is. We mirrored it on the design page so we can choose send as is and then click on send again. Now it did cut, but it did not cut very well. So instead of unloading the mat, I am going to increase my blade depth and then send it through again. It looks like the green cut real well that time. And I think the red is going to be okay too. Let's unload the mat. We can cut our designs out here and save the rest for another project. I like to use a lint roller to grab all of the small bits and pieces of the weeded vinyl. We are going to take this slowly and try to keep all of those small circles intact on the transfer sheet here. And 
it is a no-go. I think we're going to be okay without them. They weren't really a vital part of the design. We're going to pretend that they were never there. This one probably would have been better for the sublimation project, but I think it's going to turn out okay. Even this teeny tiny skinny snowflake cut out. The dots were just too much for it. Now I'm going to lower the temperature and time on my heat press for the HTV. I typically go with 315 degrees for 12 seconds. And that will have to cool down just a little bit before we can move on to apply our heat transfer vinyl. I have a fresh sheet of copy paper here so that we don't have any ink transfer to our HTV toilet paper roll. Again, I'm going to unroll the first square and I'm going to get rid of the part that was glued because I do not want the glue in my project. We'll be laying the green down first. I am going to tape this down just a bit because it does not want to stay put. And use some parchment paper on top of that. You want to be very careful lifting the backing of the HTV off of the toilet paper because it does rip easily. We can line up our second layer here. Those little tiny snowflakes in the bulbs. And let's press again. This sheet did start coming up a little bit, but once it is packaged up with a bow, you're never going to notice that. I'm going to put just a tiny piece of tape on the tail end of each of these. Then I'm going to drop them into this plastic bag. Now it does have writing on one side, so you want to make sure that writing is going to be towards the back. And let's finish it off with a bow. Don't forget to make the ends of your ribbons pretty. And I'm going to trim the top of the bag off just a little bit. You still want a little bit of ruffle at the top. The last step is to take these little tabs here on the bag, make them nice and tight at the bottom, and secure them as well. Don't forget to wish us a Merry Christmas in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.